Hello to my wonderful fourth grade Griffin artists. Well, I don't know about you, but I love everything Christmas. And this year is certainly no exception. And Christmas time in the modern day art room means fun Christmas projects. Now, what I would love is for us to create some projects in the next few weeks that are things that you will have and cherish for years to come as part of your family's Christmas decorations. I have a son who is in high school now, and when I go down and take out some of the things that he made at Modern Day, those are my favorite Christmas decorations. And I want you to be able to have the same experience of having these fun decorations for years to come at your house and things to take out um, that make Christmas even extra special and remind you that you are a mighty griffin always. So today we're going to be doing a drawing and this video is going to be watched by my guys in the classroom and my guys at home. So let me first talk about the supplies that you're going to need in this video today. For my guys at home, you need some drawing paper, a pencil, crayon, a black crayon or a black marker, and then colored crayons. For my guys at school, you have the paper that I've provided, you have the crayons, and you have a pencil. We are going to need three circular shapes. And let me just put this aside and tell you, for my guys at home, I want you to go into your cabinet, into your kitchen, or wherever you think you can find these great different shapes. We are looking for a circular shape, and we're looking for three different shapes, so varying shapes, small, a medium, and then a larger one. You could use um, your cup, a cup turned upside down. You can use cans that you find in your cupboard near your pantry. Um, there, I'm sure, are lots of circular shapes like this in your house. We want differing shapes, so we want smaller and then a larger. We want them to look different, not all the same size. Um, and, um, if you can only find two, that's fine, but three would be ideal. So we have, um, varying shapes for my guys in the classroom. I went ahead and created those shapes for you. So you can use those. You have a small, a medium and a large. Okay. And just put those aside. What we're going to draw today are... Drum roll, please. Okay, that's not a drum. That is more of a um, trumpet, but that's okay. This isn't music class, it's art. Um, all right, so these are our ornaments that we are going to be drawing. And if you see these shiny, colorful ornaments, what is something that you notice about them right away? Right away, what I'm noticing is that the light is reflecting off of these shiny ornaments and you're seeing almost like a white color here, right? It's on each ornament and it's telling me that the ornament is shiny and it's telling me that that light is hitting the top of it. And as the ornament gets further and further away from the light, it gets a little bit darker in color but you're really seeing that each ornament, every single one of these has that light reflecting. You can see it right here on this neat purple one, okay? We are going to draw that. How do we convey that on a piece of paper? Well, it's gonna end up looking something like this. And as you can see, I used different circular shapes to create overlapping ornaments. Okay, on my page. Now, we're using crayon. Why are we using crayon? Because we're going to be using different values of crayon. That means you can create more of a value in a crayon the harder you press on it. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here, I'm pressing lightly on my green crayon. 
And then as I press harder, what's happening? The color's getting darker. The value is changing. You're going from light to dark. So the lightest part would probably be where this light was hitting it. The darker part would be as you're moving away from the light. And we can achieve that in our drawing by using crayon. If you used marker, well, what I like about the marker is that the color is very vibrant and it's very colorful and it's very cheerful. And I love that. And if you are desperate and don't have crayons, marker would be fine, but we're not going to get that same effect of depth with the markers. There is something that we could do if you end up using the markers, if you choose to use the markers, which is called hatching or cross hatching. And we would use a black marker to do that. And I will show you how to do that when we get to it. But for now, I would say my first choice of supplies would be the crayons. How do we create this? Well, what we're going to do is we're gonna take our paper, okay? We're going to take our handy dandy pencil and you're gonna need an eraser. And for whatever reason, every single pencil in my house does not have a proper eraser and it makes me bananas. Okay, so we have our eraser. So we have those. And then we're gonna take our shapes. Okay, so for my guys at home, remember, you've got these different shapes. You're gonna use your, um, your cans and whatever shapes that you, um, you found, okay, collected. For my guys at school, you're just gonna use the shapes that I provided with you. And you're gonna think about your layout of how you're gonna want your ornaments to be. And they're going to end up overlapping. And I'm gonna show you how you would do that. What you're going to do is you're going to take your largest shape first. Those are going to be our largest um, ornaments. So for my guys at home, this is my largest shape, so I would be using this first. All right, so we're going to use our largest circular shape, and you're going to put that on your page, and you're going to figure out where you want your largest ornament to go, and you're going to take your pencil, and you're going to trace around that shape okay okay trace all the way around there you go i'm going to take another and i am going to put another large shape here i think i'm going to do three really big ornaments. So I'm gonna do another one here that's going to end up overlapping with my other large ornament. So I have them overlapping. I have to decide which of these ornaments is going to be in the front. I'm going to decide that the one below is going to be the one that is in the front. So what I'm going to do is erase the lines of the other one so now this ornament is in the front and that ornament is in back of it, okay? I'm sorry, there's a little bit of a glare from the sun coming in. So now I'm going to take my medium shape and I'm going to go in and I'm going to trace some of those circles for my medium size ornaments. And I'm going to make one there. Okay, so I had it overlapping. I'm going to decide that the medium one is going to be in the front. So I'm going to erase the part of the larger one. So now it looks like that is in front. So the medium one is in front of the larger one and this larger one is in front of that one. I'm going to go and I'm going to make another medium shape on the other side. These are overlapping and I'm gonna go in and erase that. Pause this video when you need to pause the video. I know that I'm moving kind of quickly, so please pause. So I have one, two mediums. I think I'm gonna do another medium right on top here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go and I'm going to erase the lines of those other 
circles. So that one's in the front. So now I have like two medium shapes. Actually, I have three medium shapes, three bigger ones. Now I'm gonna go in with my small ornament, my smallest ornament shape, and I'm gonna have that overlap over here. So it's kind of fun because you decide how you want them all positioned. Oopsie, that didn't go all the way around. So you just kind of go in and play with where you want everything to be. I think I'm gonna do another smaller one down here. And don't worry so much about the pencil line, like you wanna erase them so you know which ones are in front, but also you're gonna go through with your black crayon and you're going to go over it. Okay, so I have, I think I'm pretty happy with my shapes. Maybe I'll do one, maybe I'll do one other big one. And you know, oopsies, sorry, there we go. You know what I'm gonna do with this? I'm actually gonna come over, just adjusting my, my light here, Oy. okay. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna do a large one here. And instead of overlapping, I'm just going to kind of do the shape so it's in the back. All right, so now here is my configuration. Let me move this over. Of ornaments. So now what I'm gonna do, so you can sort of see my lines a little bit better, is I'm gonna go with my black crayon, or you could use a black marker if you'd rather, and I'm gonna go over my shapes of my circles, of my circular ornaments, being careful um, to remember and see how I have, which, which ones are overlapping where. Okay, so this one goes here. And then I'll go through and erase my crayon lines. Okay. Here's my one of my smaller ones. Be patient with yourself. You've got to be patient in art and you definitely need to be patient with yourself with a project like this. You just pause the video and you can back the video up and look at it or give yourself a moment. You didn't understand part of it. You don't want to rush through an art project. You won't be happy with the way it turns out if you rush through it and it's supposed to be enjoyable. Okay, so here are all of my circles of my ornaments. So now I'm gonna go in and I am going to make the part of the ornament that connects where you hang it, okay? And I get to decide, oh, I'm gonna go in here also and erase some of my pencil lines. Sorry, that shakes the camera a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna take out one of these out. Okay, so here's, look at that shiny, pretty red. Hey, this looks like Rudolph's nose. Um, I'm going to make this part now. As you see, it's a loop. It's got this little um, shape here um, and then that little loop. Now I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm not gonna do a loop like that. I'm gonna do a hook. So first I'm gonna decide where the top of my ornament is going to be, right? So is your ornament like this? Is your ornament like this? Is your ornament turned on its side? Well, we're gonna have a little bit of everything. So I'm going to do it like this, okay? Here, I'm gonna have this ornament on its side, like that. Here, I think I'm gonna make this ornament slightly kind of leaning to the left. Over here, I'm gonna make this ornament 
almost turned completely onto its side. Over here, this ornament's gonna be like so. So I'm just doing these little hooks. Hook there. My biggie in the back. So now you have this really fun overlapping composition of ornaments. Love it. So we're going to go and I'm going to go in and I'm going to do just a little bit of lines. Let me show you. Going in to where these little bits of the hook are and I'm just doing like one, two, three, four little marks. And what that's doing is that's kind of implying that that is round, right? That that goes around. And it just kind of gives it a little bit more depth. So just go in and you do these little, little shading on one side of those hooks. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and we're going to do these little reflecting bits here, okay? And, Remember how I had those before? Okay, so I know this is where you're gonna be hard on yourself and you're gonna say, I don't like the shape of my... So take out your pencil, okay? And you can do your shapes, the reflecting shapes with your pencil first and then go over it with your black marker or crayon. Do not overthink these reflecting shapes because as you see on these, they're just all kind of different and wonky but they are almost like a little bit like a rectangle that's kind of curved or a diamondy shape. They're all sort of different. That one looks like a, like a triangle that's on its side. Okay, so let's see. Something sort of like that, a triangle. Um, some of them had a shape kind of like that that was a rectangular, rectangular shape. Okay, so we're just gonna go through and decide where that light is hitting that ornament and creating that light that's being reflected, okay? And I just went through quickly and sort of just did that. Okay, so that is where the light is being reflected and it is going to be white. We're going to leave that section white. See there and there. So cool. Okay. So let me just show you for the people that are saying, I, I do not get what you just did. Mrs. Shu. what in the world did you just do? Okay. So I'm just going to show you on a much larger scale. These like little reflecting shapes. You can do like this sort of shape, which is, the shape of sort of a curved triangle. You can do a shape like so, which is a sort of like a rectangle with the curved sides. Again, you could do a longer kind of triangular shape, okay? You could do a square type of shape. So if you think of a square, it has four sides, but these are curved because like this, that actually would be fine, but I feel like the curved look is more kind of what we're going for here. So you can just do the triangles if you want. Remember, you can do the um, squares. You can do more of like a rectangular shape. Okay, so maybe practice that on a separate piece of paper before you go in and do it. But here I've got all of my ornaments now overlapping and they have their reflecting. Now it's time to color them. So I just love this red one. So I think I'm gonna color one of my ornaments red, maybe this one right here in the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start coloring it and around the area where that white reflecting mark is, I'm going to press lightly on my crayon. As I move further and further away, I'm going to press harder, see? So I'm going to, as I move away, I'm gonna start pressing harder because that is 
the area of my ornament that's further away from that light reflecting. I'm sorry, this camera is shaking on this table. Okay, so here we are. So here you're seeing, hopefully, the way I color this is conveying that we have a circular shape here. This is the furthest away from the light and this is where the light is reflecting. Okay. Let's go in and let's do a I'm going to I'm going to do this one down here. So again, up here, I'm going to do that green color. And I'm applying just a little bit of pressure, just enough pressure so that I can actually color with it. And then as I get further down, I'm going to press harder. So you're seeing that color. See those muscles, guys? You're going to press a little bit harder so that the color is a little bit darker. And so you're creating the look that as you're moving away, it's getting a little bit more shaded. See how that's working out so gradual light pressure light pressure light pressure because I'm, I'm right by that light and then I start to apply a little bit more pressure a little bit more pressure a little bit more pressure and the most pressure and the darkest I'm going to have it is at that part of the ornament that's furthest from the light so how do we do it when it's overlapping all right and, and there's no shame in the game of turning your little paper around so it makes it easier to color. So here at the top, I'm doing this ornament. This ornament's going to be blue. And at the top, of course, I do not want to color in my little reflector, reflecting area there. That's my... That we leave white because it's showing um, that that's where the light's reflecting. Down here, I'm going to press hard because that is the area of this ornament that's furthest away from the light, okay? I'm just go in here, get in there. This is a little bit further away, so I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. I'm gonna press a little bit harder over there, and then I'm gonna go and, and have it be very light by the top. So that's what we're doing. You want it to sort of be a natural, gradual, okay? So you're sort of seeing difference there. So I'm gonna go in and do that with all of my uh, ornaments. So remember the top lighter, and then as you get to the bottom, you press a little bit harder. Now, if you had used the marker, like we talked about, okay, where you have that more vibrant color, you can do something called hatching or cross hatching. Cross hatching is, looks like, hatching is this, creating, hatching is a little bit of like what we did on the side of our little ornament um, parts to make it look a little bit shading. That's a little hatching effect, and that creates a little bit of a shade and shows that there's a, a shape there, a dimension there. So you would go in and you would do a little bit of hatching on the side. Now, cross hatching is going across your hatch, and that is creating a shadow. So if you decided to use marker because you like that brighter color, what you would do is you would go in to where there'd be shade on your ornament, so not up at top, the top, because that's where the light is, I would go down to the bottom and I could hatch like so to create a shadow. Or you can hatch and then cross hatch to create that look of a shadow on there, okay? Now I'm using a crayon to do it, but you could use a, a black marker as well. And then I'd even go down and just do my sort of shading down below the ornaments. 
to show that there is an object there that's shading it. So that's how you would do it if you had the marker. I, I use the crayon because um, I don't have my black marker on me and I don't want to leave to go get it, leave the room to go get it. Okay, so now back to our crayon um, ornaments. I'm going to make these uh, little hooks gold. You could make them gray if you wanted. I, I'm just thinking that they're going to be gold for me. So I'm going in. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to color the rest of my, my ornaments. And it's fun to choose which colors you're going to do. Um, I'm gonna do orange here, just make them bright and happy and cheerful. And again, towards the bottom, I'm going to do press harder on the bottom. See, that's the one that's furthest away. And then as I work my way up, lighter and lighter and lighter. And I'm gonna go through and do that with all of them. See, that's creating a shadow. I've got some shadows working in this room anyway with this light coming in. This is afternoon light. So there we go. See this? Okay. A little purple. Purple ornament would be fun. So again, lighter at the top. Try not to get into that space there. If you do, you can try to erase it or you could even use white out. I'm going to apply pressure, the most pressure to my crayon at the bottom. Move your paper around to make it easier for you. Lightest at the top. And as you go up, Lighter, lighter, lighter. So hopefully as you're looking at this, you're saying, yes, I totally get it. I get what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down, Mrs. Huke. And you're seeing that we're creating a really cool picture that has depth. So I'm gonna Pick my colors. It's fun to pick your colors. Sort of inspired by these ornaments. Mrs. Huke has uh, about, uh, well, I'm embarrassed to say about 10 boxes of Christmas decorations. Yep, that's right. What do they say? Sorry, not sorry. Um, it's a little daunting when you go down there and you realize you have quite a bit of Christmas decorations, but that's okay. I like to celebrate. I like to celebrate life's happy occasions. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna go through and just do all your different ornaments. Okay, so you can do a yellow. Let's color the rest of these together. I just, I'm sorry about this video shaking. All right, so again, most pressure at the bottom. Oh, sorry. Working my way up. I'm creating. That shape. Okay. So, two more ornaments to do. So you guys can, can pause the video and go in and um, finish coloring your ornaments and, and leave your, okay, so here is where I had my ornament turned. Sorry, I'm just interrupting myself to do this. Got to pay attention. Um, so I'm doing the darkest pink away from that, and then I'm going to go in and get lighter and lighter as I get up towards the top. Um, and I would like for you to keep 
Okay, so for my guys at school, keep this at school. Put your name on it, and um, I'd like to collect them when I come in next week. Um, for my guys at home, please bring them in. Please make sure that your name is on them, okay? All right, there we go. And one last one. What color am I going to make the last one? I think I'll do the last one a dark green. Here we go. All right. The last one's going to be green. All right. Here we go. Last one. Now I'm going fast because I'm doing this video, but all right, so lighter up at the top. And then just kind of go in and see if you like how it's shaded. And you can even use the um, hatching and the cross hatching uh, with the crayons as well that are in the same color. So monochromatic means all in one kind of color. So if you were wearing a monochromatic outfit, you'd have like a blue top, blue bottom, blue socks, blue shoes, blue hat. That would be called monochromatic. And they could even be in different shades of blue, but they're all in the blue family. That is considered monochromatic, mono. Mono we mono. Okay, so just gonna go in, do that. All right, so now we have our picture. Now, before I go, I want to show you something really fun. So if you haven't finished, pause the video and finish. If you have finished, I want you to put it aside, make sure that your name is on it and put them in a pile and I'm gonna come and get them um, next week or before then, okay? Now, I want you to take out your black crayon. We're gonna do a fun little exercise. Just wanna show you something fun. A really fun way to make a penguin. Now this would be cute. You could use this to make like a Christmas card for somebody or you could do this um, at home for your mom and dad. Now, it would be really cute if, I'm gonna show you how to do one of these penguins, and then you could actually do a whole family of them. So you're gonna take your black crayon, because penguins are black, and you are going to, um, well, they, they have the white in the middle, and their heads are black, and part of their body is black, and then they have the kind of the, white color on the stomach, or that's at least how we're going to be drawing them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your crayon and you're going to make an eight. Now the top of the eight is gonna be small and the bottom of the eight is going to be big. Whoopsie, my crayon just broke. Okay. And you're gonna keep going around and around and around, okay? Go around that eight. All right, so now I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna make a circle and a little eye for the top. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna color the rest of the head in black. Okay, do you see that we have a penguin that's starting to take shape? Then we're gonna go out and we're gonna do little arms out to the side, which are basically like flat ovals. Okay, our arms out to the side. Then I'm gonna take my orange and I'm gonna go up and I'm going to make a cute little beak and two little feet. And my, 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 we have this cute penguin. Now, you could say, I'm gonna do a penguin for everybody in my family. And that would be so cute. So you could do or you could do your mom and dad, mom, mom and dad penguin, or grandma and grandpa penguin. Here's how you would do a smaller one. Again, you're just doing that eight shape, right? Just remember, you want the top of the eight to be smaller than the bottom because that's the body, okay? And you just keep going around and around that shape, okay? 
and I'm gonna fill in the bottom a little bit more. You're gonna go over, and I'm gonna have this penguin looking at the older penguin, the elder penguin, and I'm gonna give him a little eye, so cute, and we're gonna give him this little cute ovally, flat oval shaped arms, and I'm gonna go in and make the little feet, and then I'm going to make his little mouth. Now these guys are floating on an iceberg. So let me make the iceberg, which is a little um, oval shape. And then to get the iceberg some dimension, I'm gonna make a little line down on both sides and connect like this. And we're gonna do what we've been talking about, which is a little shading on the side. Little shading on the side to make it look like it's goes to the back there. And I'm gonna take a lighter blue and create some water. And those are how you make penguins out of eights. Now, this would be kind of cute if you wanted to do this for Christmas by making a Christmas tree on it. Maybe the Christmas tree is on the iceberg. You know what? Crazier things have happened. All right, so we're making this little Christmas tree. And they're celebrating on the iceberg. That sounds like a cold Christmas to me. But here we have our cute little penguins. And we've got our little star at the top. And we've got our penguin parent. Maybe this penguin parent has a gift in its hand. A little square box. It's cute. He's about to surprise his little penguin child. Anyway, I thought you would enjoy that fun little exercise of making a penguin out of an eight. Remember, okay, let me show you again. I guess you could make penguins different colors, but I feel like if you had a blue penguin, I'm not sure people would know what it was. Okay, so remember, you're gonna do your eight. Small head, smaller top than the bottom of the eight. And you just keep going around and around a few times, right, to get that shape. Okay. Keep going. And then at the top, you go and you do that circle, for the eye, and then you fill in the hair. I mean, I'm sorry, you fill in the head, okay? You're gonna do those cute arms out to the side. Okay, I'm gonna go in. I mean, the beak is so cute. These animals, I just can't resist a beak. Okay, so then you put your little feet in. Now, if we wanna get cute, and who doesn't wanna get cute? We could do a little hat, a little hat on him. It's kinda cute. Color that in, little, little hat. Gift. I wonder what penguins give each other for presents. I have a feeling it's fish. Ugh. Okay, so there he is on his little iceberg. All right, guys, I threw a lot at you today. Let's go back and look at what we did. And um, practice this at home and have fun with it. So we learned about shading and shape today, reflect, reflection, monochromatic colors. You're awesome. Love you. Miss you. Happy Advent. And I'm so excited for our next project. We're going to be working with clay. Get ready.